Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, MCAT eCAT collaboration with Altium MCAT co-designer and Fusion 360. My name is Fabian Winkler. I am product marketing manager at Altium Europe, and I will guide you through this webinar today. With me is my colleague, Nikolai Nurkov, product manager for the MCAT co-designer, and he will answer your questions in the background. If there are any questions, please ask them in the Q&A panel and not in the chat. At the end of the webinar, I will also answer your questions if there are still some left open. Alongside the webinar, I will be also launching a couple of polls and it will be nice if you could answer them as the results will help us to better understand our audience. Please note that this webinar will be recorded and shared accordingly over the next few days. So if you don't manage to be here for the whole session, you can watch it later in peace. So what is on our agenda for today? First, we want to um, discuss what is for different terms to make maybe some things more clear. Then, of course, we will show the MCAT co-designer in action. Afterwards, I will also show a little bit um, about Altium 365. And in the end, I will also show the MCAT co-designer virtual workflow. Let's start with what is. So some of you are may confused by all our names and products. So I will try to give you here some clarity. First item on our list is Altium Designer. So what is Altium Designer? Altium Designer is a software package. With this software package, you can design PCBs, combining schematics, layouts, and giving you all the tools you need, from basic routing up to length matching and impedance control for high-speed signals. Next one is Altium 365. Be aware that this is not Altium Designer in the browser. Altium 365 is an electronics product design platform that unites PCB design, MCAT, data management, and teamwork. It's your design storage for your component library and your PCB designs, and it gives easy access on any device anywhere. Last but not least, Altium MCAT co-designer. Our MCAT co-designer is a solution and also part of our Altium 365 platform. The MCAT co-designer works directly with electrical and mechanical data via a plugin inside the MCAT tool, and it allows a bi-directional ECAT MCAT design collaboration. So what is this bi-directional collaboration and what can it do? It's quite simple. You no longer need to export and import step files. Instead, we have implemented a simple push and pull principle via our MCAT co-designer panel. The good thing is that we do more in the background than just a simple step file exchange. In the MCAT tool, the projects are imported natively, which gives you more options to work with. In the MCAT tool, we can now move components, for example, a connector that doesn't match the front panel. We can easily adjust the board shape and place mounting holes. And if the MCAT engineer is done, he can simply push the design back to Altium Designer, where the ECAT engineer decides which changes he wants to accept or not. Also note that there is no additional cost on the MCAT side, except the MCAT license, of course. So next on our list is the MCAT co-designer demo. And here I want to explain first what we want to do. It's pretty simple. We want to take a an, an PCB enclosure, for example, from this website, Hammond uh, Manufacturing. They have some pretty neat enclosures, and we can also take a look of uh, some of them if we go to the photo tables. So we have here some enclosures which are pretty nice. I mean, it's it's a box, but <laughs> the inside of this box, it's, it's not a simple shape it's a little bit more complicated we also have mounting positions for the pcb and we want to use that to shape our 
board design. What you could do and what I already done uh, beforehand is to download the step files from the website. I imported them already in Fusion 360. So here is the enclosure, nothing special. It's what we expect. Um, we can also hide the lid to take a look inside. So this is what we use, uh, what we want to use today for our webinar. Great. Um, so how do we start? We start in Altium Designer. In Altium Designer, I am already connected to my workspace. So this is pretty important. If you don't have a workspace, uh, you can create it if you have an active subscription. If you still don't have the option to activate a workspace, it's maybe possible that one of your colleagues already has a workspace. So we allow only one workspace per company. How do we start? We start with creating a new project. So I will create a new project, an empty project. Uh, we will call it uh, and cut co-designer demo. We want to have an inversion control. So this is also one nice thing of item 365, where we have everything under version control. We are using Git in the background. I will show a little bit more of that later after the MCAT co-designer demo. So next thing, what we want to do is we want to add a schematic. I will not give it a special name. I will just save it and we can already place a component on it. For example, a connector. So just take a connector out of the workspace library, add it in here, give it a designator and save it. Next step, of course, we also need a PCB. So I will add a PCB document. Uh, I will save it. Then I will import the changes from the schematic. Nothing special. I don't need the rooms. And now we have our connected in here. What I want to do uh, first now is I, I want to do a save to server to save our project on our workspace. So here it's maybe like you are already aware from, from a different version control system like SVN or Git. Um, you can add a comment uh, for the history. Um, I will just call it created documents. Click OK if we synchronize with the server. And now we are up to date. To push this to the MCAT tool, it's pretty simple. We just have to open the MCAT co designer panel. If you don't have it, you can go to panels at the bottom right and uh, then select MCAT co designer. And then you should see this panel here. And here it's pretty simple. We have only two options, push and pull. And since we don't have anything to pull yet, um, since we just created this project, we will use push. We can add a comment, for example, uh, please edit board shape. I can also check this uh, box for uh, sharing it. So, I will share it with myself. I'm already um, in, in this workspace, but if your mechanical engineer is not already in the workspace, you can uh, check this box and I will show what will happen after I click on send. Um, first, the board data will be processed and stored on the workspace. And since I checked this box for sharing, I can add now the email address for the MCAT engineer. What the mechanical engineer will get is an email invitation to the workspace. So to, to get there, he has to create an Altium Live account. This Altium Live account is free, so uh, don't worry. Um, there will be no additional costs, as I already mentioned. And yeah. Um, why does he need an item live account? We will see this in a second. Then I switch to um, Fusion 360. So since I'm already invited, I don't need it. I click on cancel, but you may want to invite me. First, um, before we start with Fusion 360, I want to show how to install the plugin. Here we go simple to altium.com. 
and uh, then to resources and support, downloads. And if we scroll a little bit down, we have the Uncut Code Designer plugins. So we have plugins for SolidWorks, PTC Creo, Autodesk Inventor, and Autodesk Fusion 360. We also have Siemens NX, but this is exclusively for um, the enterprise subscription. Just download uh, the plugin you need, install it, uh, and then you're good to go. Let's jump into Fusion 360. What is different now after we install this plugin, we have this item co-designer toolbar. I can click on it. I can see that we have now some special commands. And we also have the item co-designer panel. This co-designer panel needs an item account. So here comes the item life account into play to verify um, you and to connect you with the uh, item 365 workspace. So let me enter my credentials here. Um, if you want, you can also use the checkbox remember me. Um, that you don't have to enter your password all the time. If you don't have an account, you can also register um, a new one here at the bottom link. Um, so yeah, I will sign in. And this is what you will get now. Um, we can see that we are connected to our workspace. It's the same name uh, what uh, was shown in Item Designer. We have now two buttons uh, for us. Mainly important is the open button right now. I can click on it and then I can see all the PCB projects which are available to me. We select our PCB project which we just created. Uh, I can see a preview of it, nothing special. Um, I can see when the last push was and uh, who did the last push. I can also see the comment. I click OK. Now it asks me uh, where I want to store it and how the name should be. I will just leave it as it is and click on save. Now it's importing all the data from Alto 365 into Fusion 360. If you do it the first time, especially if you have multiple components uh, in there, it can take a little bit longer since all these components needs to be uploaded to Fusion 360. But this is a one-time process, so I already did this before. Therefore, there was uh, now no upload process. So it's, it's a one-time thing. Afterwards, it, it's uh, a lot faster. I will now get a warning. It's simply because I didn't place the component on the PCB. So this is fine. We don't need it yet. And yeah, here we have our PCB. One thing I already noticed is that the thickness of the PCB, it looks pretty thin. So I obviously forget something. And here it's important to keep in mind that you don't change the thickness of the PCB in the AppCut tool because that's not how it works. <laughs> um, it will also be not synchronized back to Item Designer. So here we have to go back into Item Designer to fix this. Most of you probably know, especially if you're working with Item Designer, um, we do it with the Layer Stack Manager. Here we go to the PCB document, then to Design Layer Stack Manager, and here we can define our Layer Stack. So the Layer Stack is important to have right thickness. Make sure to be in contact with your manufacturer um, to have first the right Layer Stack, the correct material properties, for example, if you want to do uh, simulations or impedance measurements, and it's also important for the thickness. So I will just use present what we already have in uh, Item Designer to speed this process a little bit up. I will just save it. I will save as well um, the PCB document. And next thing, I have to push this data again, uh, again towards the MK tool. Herefore, again, I just use the push, changed layer stack. I don't need to share it anymore. I click on send. It will push the data over. 
And at the same time, I will get a notification in Fusion 360 that there are new changes. So this is in real time. You don't have to wait until um, it's detected. Yeah, what do I have to do now? I have to press on pull to um, pull the latest changes. I can see what um, changed here. Uh, I, I will just apply all the changes. I can also disable um, single ones of, uh, of it. What you may have seen is that the thickness of the PCB already um, increased. So yeah, now we have our board in here. We could also start defining our board shape and, and all the other stuff just like uh, this in here without an enclosure. So this would be also possible without an issue. But we want to do it with an enclosure. And for that, we will create a new design. I will save it under uh, MCAT assembly. Let me push this window a little bit aside. We don't need it yet. Next thing is I just drag the enclosure in here first. We can uh, maybe rotate it to have it in line with our axis here in the top right from Fusion 360. We can also move it a little bit up and click OK. What else do we want? We don't want to see the lid right now. So I will hide it, but we can see the inside of the enclosure. Next step is maybe you already guessed it. I will take our PCD document and drag it in here as well. Here, um, I will try to position it uh, right away that we already have the correct height of the PCB, that it will be on top of these um, um, mounting positions here. Uh, I will translate and select the height and press OK. So what you can see now is we have enclosure, we have a PCB with the component in here, and it's not quite in the correct position. Uh, we will fix this in a second. It's pretty easy. Uh, first, I want to show you something uh, else in the item co-designer panel. We also have this button, recognized PCBs. If I click on it, it will recognize that this is the PCB we imported um, before. So we don't have to switch back between all the different uh, documents, at least not for uh, these steps. So it's, it's pretty nice. Next step is to um, adapt the PCB shape. Uh, how do we do that? It's pretty simple. Um, first, we have to select our um, PCB and uh, enter the edit in place mode. So we can just click on this pencil icon to enter it. Then we have uh, our structure here of our PCB. We have a board and within the board, we have a sketch with the board outline. So we can now simple right click on the board outline sketch, say edit sketch and try to uh, and start editing the board shape. We can now define or move it uh, if we want, but I think it will be a little bit too complicated to, to match this uh, enclosure here. So what we will do is we will just delete what we have in here. Now in Fusion 360, we have a nice function. It's the project function. To activate it, we can press the key P and I can select the inside here of the board, um, which will fit pretty perfectly for our needs in here. Uh, it's important to deactivate the projection link. Um, currently, it's not supported by the MCAT co-designer. And then we press OK. So now we already have our shape, um, at, at least nearly. We can see we have some cutouts here for, for mounting positions. I will just select them and delete them with the delete key. 
after this, um, we can finish the sketch. We will get a warning that the reference um, profile of the extrusion is now not correct. We have to fix it. We can see it in the timeline. It's this yellow highlighted uh, extrusion command. So we will edit this feature. And then for profiles, it already says missing profiles. I select it. I, I just click on it. And after this, I will select the sketch we just created. It will automatically extrude it to the correct uh, thickness of the PCB. So I just click OK. And now we already have our PCB in our enclosure at the, uh, with the correct thickness, with the correct shape, at the correct position. Um, I can save it. Uh, at least if I go out of this edit in place, I can save it. And you will see on the left side in our uh, project menu uh, that also our other document will be updated. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's now in the correct place, but right now it will just fly around inside this enclosure. So we have to add some mounting bolts. Uh, for that, I will enter again the edit in place mode. And yeah, like, like you do in Fusion 360, you can now place holes. So we press H or the hold command. I select the, um, the object. Next, I click on this uh, center point here and align it with the hole in here. After this, I can just enter the diameter of the hole. I will choose four millimeters, press enter, and we have a hole at the right position. So I will do it uh, the same way for the next hole, since we have two. Simple as that. Perfect. What else um, do we need? We have to move our component, of course, because our component is here on the right side, not within the PCB. So for that, we have our component um, in our project tree. I will select it. What we have to do first, since you, you can see we don't have a move command here, we have to click on rigid group first. We can cancel it and afterwards we can move it. I will just move, move it with the uh, um, simple features we have here. I would recommend to not change the um, height of this um, component since, yeah, it, it will be not correct. Then. So we can now place it uh, a little bit better. We can rotate it. Let me place it here more or less in the center as an example. Uh, it's important to capture the position. If you don't do it, it will mess things around. Um, it's a typical thing with Fusion 360, always capture the position. So after I've done with everything, I click OK. And we have now also the component at the right position. Great. We can now finish edit in place. And what else do we, um, what else can we do here? We can set the enclosure. So, I mean, we have an enclosure in here, but uh, with, it's, it's, it's not referenced in our um, project itself. So, we have no enclosure items specified yet. That's something what we want to do now. Herefore, I have to select the enclosure. Then I go to the item, um, item co-designer toolbar and we have this enclosure command here. I click on it and it will now execute this command. This can take a little bit. And yeah, um, the definition of the PCB enclosure was successfully updated and we can also see it in our item co-designer panel. Great. Um, before we 
push it back towards Altium Designer. We also have some other nice features. For example, we can um, create cutouts. We can um, create some keep, keep out areas. For example, if you know that there will be, I don't know, um, a heat sink uh, mounted uh, somewhere or that something is uh, already in the way, uh, we can create also keep out areas. Um, to do that, um, we have to create them in the PCB project itself. But there is a little workaround to make it um, in context of the enclosure. And first we can go into edit in place. Again, um, for our um, PCB. And here we can create two sketches. Uh, one for the keyboard area. Um, I will just place a simple rectangular shape. Um, finish sketch. And I will give it a name so I know what is what. I, I don't have to give it a name, but it's easier to remember what this should be. So this should be our keep out area. I will create a second sketch. And this should be our key, um, cutout. Right click, rename, cutout. And now I can uh, finish edit in place. I can't um, do it in here, then the um, item co-designer tools will give me an error, but I have to do it in uh, inside the PCB project. So I will save it now. It will update everything. And before I do that, I will also close all projects because sometimes um, there could be still some issues if I don't close the um, documents first. So now I go inside the PCB document. I see both of my uh, sketches in here. So I can go into the item co-designer toolbar and select the cutout tool, for example. Then I first have to select uh, the surface because it wants me to create a sketch. But since I already created the sketch, uh, we can just click on finish and I can select the sketch we just created. Now it's just an extrusion command, so I can just lower it to cut it out. I press OK and we have our cutout. Now I can do the same for the for the keep out area. So we have a keep out area command in here. And it's pretty much the same. At first I have to select the surface where we want to create the sketch. But since we have the sketch, I can skip the skip and select it. And here um, it's a little bit different. Um, we will extrude it by one millimeter um, to, yeah, so that it's recognized as a keep out area, you can do the same for uh, the bottom side if you want. And this is how it looks like. So I will save it. I will open back up the assembly. It seems that Fusion 360 is a little bit slow right now. Okay, now it works. And here we have everything of what we have. It's updated. We have the latest version inside. And now is the time to push it back to Altium Designer. Um, before we do that, I, I want to show you the board area. So also the keyboard area is recognized here in our co-designer panel. And we can also define the restrictions. So we can say if it's only for VRs, tracks, copper, yeah, that's something what we can also define in here. I will keep it as this um, and press the push button right now. 
Uh, we can also add a comment. Of course, this is optional. Click on send. Everything will be uploaded. Currently, we have a small bug that you will get this warning if you have keep out areas or a cutout um, that this is not supported. But this is not true. We will see that it is supported and uh, we will check it in a second in Team Designer. So everything is uploaded. I go back into item designer. I see that we have new changes, so I can pull them. Here I see everything what we changed. Um, the board shape, uh, the component, how it moves. We can also select all together. Um, and for me, it's fine if I don't I don't know if, if, if I don't like something, I can deactivate it. I can also enter a reason for it. But for me right now, everything is fine. So I apply uh, everything. We can see it now in the board planning mode. So if I press um, the key two, I can enter the 2D mode or free for the 3D mode. Um, you will notice now that our enclosure is closed now. So why is this? Because in the assembly, we, um, we hide the lid, but it will always take um, the original um, project or, or component as a reference. And this is this one here, and here we didn't uh, hit the lid. So that's why we still see it in item designer. And you may ask, hmm, I can't see my PCB now. This is not so um, not so great. So how can I hide it um, without telling the MCAT engineer to, to change everything? So it's pretty simple. We can open the PCB panel. Um, if you don't have it, again, on the bottom right, click on panels and then on PCB. Then select um, in the drop-down menu 3D models. And in here, we have three models. Inside the three models, we have our um, assembly. And we can open it. And now we can see everything inside here. For the lid, it's pretty simple. We can click on this little icon here to hide it. What, we, uh, what else can we do? We can select the, um, the whole enclosure and um, make it maybe more transparent. And now I can see my PCB. Um, I still can see the enclosure, so everything is fine. Um, when I go into 2D mode, um, you may wondering that um, this uh, free model is also um, not great to work with. And if you want to hide it completely, you can go again to panels, the view configuration, and then to view options and just hide 3D bodies. Great. Um, I will save my PCB document now. Um, you, well, what I want to say here is maybe you, you will have now two origins. We have our item designer, so our eCut origin. It's, it's um, this crosshair here at the bottom left. And we also have the MCAT um, origin. It's this uh, little um, dim crosshair. So just that you're aware, you don't have to um, be, you don't have to move them that they are aligning. It's, it's, it's not needed, but just that you're aware not, um, and not be confused why you have two origins in your design after this process. Of course, we could now edit the board shape in item designer again, um, but I would not recommend it because if you worked in your uh, mechanical tool with dimensions uh, and stuff like that, they will be deleted after you import board shape changes from IT designer again. It's because um, the MCAT co-designer will freshly import the board. And therefore, all um, edits you did before will be lost, just that you are aware. 
So I would recommend to, yeah, to, to hand over the board shape job to, to the MCAT engineer, um, because they probably know the best how the shape can look like and how much clearance there is between different components. Great. Um, what else can I show you? I can uh, maybe place some tracks on our PCB to show how they will represent it in the MCAT tool. Therefore, I will press a control W. So I will place just some tracks as an example. I can also switch the layers to have multiple layers visible. So after we uh, finalized our routing um, with an item designer, just as an example, I, I hope your routing will look a little bit better than mine. Um, we can push it again towards the uh, MCAT tool. So just click again on push. And it tracks, I will click on send. It will be pushed. What else um, I can do is since we finalized our design here, we can also save to server to synchronize everything um, uh, with our item 365 workspace. The comment, click OK, everything is synchronized. We will now go back to Fusion 360. We will pull these changes. We can see what changed. So the holes moved from the connector. Um, we have a new board origin. We have a new board origin. Um, I know these two holes are um, the ones we uh, placed before. P1 holes are the holes of the pins. And we have decals for top and bottom layer. So I apply everything. This warning is just that I have it um, that I was working in a different tab. This is uh, fine. So is it done yet? Yes. Um, so if I go into the component, then under the board, we can activate uh, top copper, bottom copper, top overlay, and bottom overlay. And what it will do, let me hide the enclosure here. So you can see um, the tracks. I can also activate uh, bottom copper. You can see that we have a layer change in here um, so that you know where you can, I don't know, place something or not, or that you have to be careful that there are tracks on the PCB. Um, we also can show the silk screen. So top overlay, bottom overlay, uh, this is also possible. And yeah, I will save it. And then we are, or maybe I will save it with the enclosure visible. And when we are done. So next point of uh, on our agenda is the item 365 demo. So you may wonder how you can um, go to item 365. We have multiple ways. We can do it via the Altium co-designer panel in uh, Fusion 360. So we have here this MCAT co-designer demo. It's our PCB project. And then we can click on this uh, icon here for open it in the web. Of course, we also have the possibility to do it from Altium designer. So, and here you already see the first advantage of item 365. It's the viewer, it's the web viewer. So anyone who is invited to your workspace or who you shared the project with has access to the viewer. Um, you can see the schematics, the PCB documents, and also the 3D um, model. You can rotate it if you hold down the left mouse button. 
and um, you can also cross probe. So if I select this component here and I switch now to the PCB document, um, it will cross probe. It will automatically um, select the component, the same for the 3D view and for the bomb. Uh, this document is a little bit unspectacular, so I will switch to another project, which is a little bit more complicated, and it's the Kami FMU project. Double click on it, and it will open. Um, just for your information, all the projects you just saw, um, these are included um, within the sample file. So if you create a new workspace, um, you will have the option to enable um, the sample projects or sample files and then these projects are included. So we have here now all our um, schematics. We can select um, components um, or nets without an issue. So let me select here this um, power line here. I can see how long this line is, how, which layers we use. Um, we can now switch to the PCB view. We can now see them highlighted in here and also in 3D mode um, with the viewers and all kind of and stuff with, with the pads, the tracks. We can all see it in here. Great. Um, what else? We have a history. So I mentioned that we have. Um, everything under Git um, with item 365 and the version controls. So if I go to history of a project, I can see all the changes we made and who made them. So I, I can see when there was a project release, I can see when there was a commit, I can even add text, I can see what was added, modified or deleted. So maybe this one here is a little bit a better example, for example, we added one file, we removed three components, and we modded, modified one file and variant. Um, we can compare different um, commits, uh, schematic compare, PCB compare, bomb compare. This is no, no problem. We can also do it between um, project releases. Here we can also compare the GABA um, files. This is possible. Um, if I open these um, project history, I can even jump back to um, a specific state pretty easy. And of course, I, I can also just clone um, a specific state or download the sources from it. Great. Um, what else? Um, we have a possibility to create comments. So. For example, um, I don't know, um, for the capacitors, um, if we see that there is something wrong, they have the wrong value, um, we can create a comment and you can choose it here at the top right. And then you can again select um, a component, a net, uh, or you can drag your own rectangle and you can mention someone with the add function. Uh, I will mention myself. And um, please check the values. I can also, um, yeah, I, I, I will post it. And automatically, there is a screenshot attached to my comment to see all this state uh, of, of the schematic, in, in this case, when I placed this comment. So the neat thing now is if I go back to my item designer and I open this exact same project. Now I have to remember in which schematic I was. It was the CPU schematic. And I open the schematic in item designer. I can now see this comment in here. And this is really in, in, in real time. So there is also no delay. So let me just enter a test um, comment reply, I switch back to the web and here it is. I can also resolve comments, so this is also no issue. So it's great for re reviewing. You also have um, much more functionalities. For example, if we create 
releases with release manager. We have the possibility to share these releases with the manufacturer. Um, simple click on send to manufacturer for a release. You can define the packages, which, uh, which ones you want to share with the manufacturer. Um, you can enter the email address and click on send. Um, then you will have them listed in, in here. You can see when it was, who shared it, and which files were shared. You can see who has access to it. And of course, you can uh, open it yourself, share it uh, further, download it or delete it, and therefore also delete the access to these files. Next thing on our to-do list for today is the MCAT co-designer virtual workflow. So what is the virtual workflow? We implemented the virtual, virtual workflow uh, for the case if you're a mechanical engineer, but your um, electronics team is not using iTunes designer or not using iTunes 365 right now, but you still want to try it out what we have done here um, today, at least from the mechanical perspective. And for that, we have to um, create a new account. Um, so I will log out of my account um, I'm using right now. I'm doing the same in uh, the MCAT tool. So I will simply sign out. And you can now create a new account um, um, within the MCAT tool. So I will do that. I click on register. I will create a new email or I will create a new account right now. Um, continue. I will get an email now to verify my email address. Let me show it to you. It's looking like this. Here I click on verify email and I will get to this page. Here I have to enter my first name, my last name, and of course I have to select the password. Then I can click on register an account and we are fully prepared. I go back to Outdesk, Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, I will log in with my new created account. Click on sign in. And I follow more or less the same uh, workflow what I've showed to you. So we click on open. Here we have now a demo project. So I can take a, a preview. Um, of it, I can see uh, the comments. So it's obviously um, uh, now everything simulated. I click on OK. I can now select uh, the name and this, um, the location where I want to store it. ITM Designer will now import it. will take a little bit. Also here, if you do it for the first time, be aware that you have to upload all the components first to Fusion 360. Um, I've done it already on the right side. You can see that all the components are loaded right now. Some, mo some more compon components than, uh, than we used before. It's creating now the PCB with the holes. Add the copper. And then we are nearly done with it. Let's give us give it a few more seconds. Perfect. And now we simulate um, a push from the ECAT side. Since we, we don't have anyone to work with together, um, we are simulating it. So it will notify you that there are new changes and we can update them. It will detect the changes. I can see all the changes. Uh, I can select 
um, uh, the components to see the preview. If I'm fine with it, I can apply these changes and everything will be updated. And that's the virtual workflow. Okay, the, now also adjust the copper changes. Um, for the copper changes or for the copper itself, we can also take a look at it since it's a little bit more complicated than in the project um, we created um, a few minutes before. But first, all the changes have to be applied. And okay, now we are done. Well, we don't need this panel anymore. I can go to my board and I can um, enable the top copper, for example, to see where uh, the copper is, the same for the bottom copper. Well, for such projects, I would recommend to not activate them both in parallel, since then it could be maybe a little bit too confusing or too busy on the screen. If, if you want to escalate it any, uh, any further, we can also add the bottom overlay and top overlay. Um, but yeah, it depends on you. You can activate or enable or disable it uh, how you want. That's it, what we want to show today. 